I wanted to cover a very, very important system called the digestive system and give you the basics and show you the relationship between what symptoms occur from different parts of the digestive tract. So let's just take a look at this. So we got the stomach thing right here. And the stomach makes acid, very strong acid. There's two places in the body that you have this strong acid. One is in the stomach, one is in the va uh, vagina because you want to kill off the bacteria. And when this pH becomes more alkaline, you have all sorts of issues that occur. Number one, you get undigested protein, and that's putrefaction, that's gas. Um, number two, you're going to get heartburn. Why? Because this pH has to be between one and three to be able to keep this valve closed. And if this pH goes higher, more alkaline, then this valve starts opening up right here, and acid starts splashing up here. And a lot of times, it's not even this acid. It's a waste acid that comes down from here that comes up here. That's why it's really sour. So heartburn is a real a problem with not enough acid. It's not too much acid. So every time you take Tums or um, proton inhibitors or antioxidants, you actually make it worse over time. Now, indigestion, like the food just sits right here, that means you don't have enough acid. So what is the remedy? Betaine hydrochloride. Betaine hydrochloride. It comes from beets and you can get it from the health store. Take two, three, maybe four with each meal. They're real small, but that will actually give you a lot of relief unless you have an ulcer. So if this has been going on too long and you have an ulcer, then you're going to have to, uh, you'll find out real quick. You'll like it more uh, burning. But if it's, if it's an ulcer, you have to heal it with chlorophyll. Uh, one good remedy would be cabbage or coleslaw. There's something in uh, cabbage that's really good for ulcers. Okay, so now food comes down here, it's broken down, and then the pancreas is a workhorse because it has to make enzymes. Enzymes are little proteins that help break down food. So depending on what you eat, the body, the pancreas, will make or release whatever enzyme you need to break down that meal. So if it's more protein or carbohydrates or fats, uh, it'll break it down and even even has enzymes to break down the DNA in the animal um, food that you eat. I mean, that's incredible. Um, it breaks everything down. So, But those people that have eaten a lot of sugar in their life, they pretty much kind of weaken their pancreas and they also weaken the enzyme part of that pancreas. It's called the exocrine gland. And then they can't release these enzymes and so they start having all sorts of undigested proteins. And guess, guess where you get allergies from? Allergies because that protein leaks into the lining of the colon, gets absorbed through the lymphatic system, and your immune system starts to inappropriately attack it as a microbe, and you start getting autoimmune problems, allergies, asthma, hay fever, all these things, just because you can't digest. So a lot of times in autoimmune cases, you'll see um, undigested DNA in the stool. But this is a very important um, gland to help secrete enzymes to help you digest. So if the pancreas has a problem, you're going to have pain over the left lower quadrant or upper uh, lower um, abdomen, right through here underneath your left rib cage. And then it wraps around the back too. You'll have sticky stool. Um, you'll get bloating. You'll feel real bloated over that area. And you'll probably, the food will sit right here as well. Um, so if that happens, you can go to the health store and get some it's called pancreatrophin enzyme, which is really good to help support the pancreas, and you'll get a lot of relief. Okay, now we got the liver. The liver releases bile, B-I-L-E, and it's stored in the gallbladder, and it releases down through here. And uh, this is important because you need the bile to squish all that bile to start breaking down the nutrition or the food factors, especially the fat, to pull the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E and K. So the way you know you have a gallbladder problem is if you get bloating, burping, belching, right shoulder pain because it refers there or around the back and the scapula, or your stool will start floating because you're not digesting the fat so it just kind of hangs out on top. Um, so also you're going to have deficiencies in the vision so the eyes you can't see at night. That's vitamin A deficiency and then real dry skin. And then you would need some good bile support, and I use a gallbladder formula for that, one with a meal. Now we get down to the small intestine.
your intestine is about 33 feet. And in this intestine, you have close to 900 trillion microbes. A lot of microbes living in there between five and a thousand different species of friendly bacteria, friendly yeast, friendly molds, uh, friendly fungus to, to actually help you break down your stool, make vitamins for you, help digest the food, um, help um, get rid of the waste. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. We give these microbes room and board and they clean up our waste and they give us vitamins and nutrition. They also take the pressure off the liver and that they help detoxify chemicals. But there are unfriendly pathogens or microbes in there as well. And there's this constant competition. But most of the bacteria in there is called lactobacillus and lactobacillus makes lactic acid. And lactic acid makes it very uncomfortable for the bad guys to live. And so apparently our body and the good bacteria are resistant to acids. They like acid and because they make acid, but acid is a ten, it tends to uh, kill off some of these microbes. And that's why even at the stomach level, we need this acid to kill off microbes too. So if we lose this, we end up with H. pylori and other bacteria and viruses and our immune system goes downhill. And then if we take antibiotics, it just screws everything up too. So if you have constipation, yeast infection, fungus, bad breath, we know that your digestive system is lacking the flora, the friendly bacteria. Uh, there's a product that I recommend called Pro-EM1, which is really good for that. And you take it before bed and it slowly helps you reestablish your flora or your friendly bacteria. Yogurt does not uh, uh, supply enough yogurt uh, bacteria to make it uh, stick, but kefir does. So kefir is a much better product. Get the plain one, and it's really good for candida and yeast. Okay, so that's just kind of a summary of digestion um, to give you the basics, and I hope that helped.